So start this event. We pray to Lord Ganesha to make this event a grand success. And we ask for his blessings so that not only this event, but we all accomplish our goals in our respective life. So let's learn together, gather our strengths together, and let's pray together. Can we play the video, please? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Can we have the um, Ganesh Vandana video, please? to moderate this event and be a part of this historic ISBG conference. Firstly, I would want to, I would, uh, I would like to welcome our SDG committee members and trustee of IIU, co-founders of IIU, and our highly experienced speakers, and finally, our loving audience and all the participants. We all know now about IIU, but do, we, do you all know who all are working religiously behind making this vision and mission of bringing this new era of education? Let me take this opportunity to introduce them all. We have SDG committee members, Piyush Pandit, co-founder and COO, the IIU, Roshni Lal, trustee, the IIU. Dr. Prachi Gaur, Country and Director and President, Training and Development India, I, the IIU, Nada Ratkove, Croatia, Dr. Pratibha Mishra, India, Satnam Dechakar, uh, Co founder UK, the IIU, Rabia Bhatia, India, Mona Angya, Co founder IIU, Indonesia, then we have Snita Kadam, India and Ruchi, India. In leadership, we have Mona Agnia, Indonesia co-founder, Dr. Satnam, United Kingdom co-founder, Vice President Honorary, Degree Councils, 
Piyush Pandit, co-founder, chief operating officer, India. Mr. Jack William, co-founder and director, humanity affairs, Paris, France. Nadil Nabil, co-founder, Northeast Africa. And we have Stephen uh, V. Australia, co-founder. Then we have President's Council, Pratibha Mishra, President International Advisory Council of IIU India, Dr. Satnam, Vice President, Honorary Degrees Council, United Kingdom, Piyush Pandit, Co-Founder, India, Mr. Jack Covillier, Co-Founder, Paris, France, and in Advisory Committee Council, we have Mr. Roshni Lal, Lifetime Trustee of SBP Global Social Activist, member of Australian Medical Board, Dr. Parleen Somani, independent academic scholar, United Kingdom, Dr. Sirli Mukherjee, Director of Education and Dean Students Affairs, Adamus University, India, Pratibha Mishra, President, Count, uh, President Ad International Advisory Council of IIU, India, Indrajit Ghosh, Social Studies Teacher, India, Arup K. Mukhopadhyay, UNACCO Group of Schools, Impal, India, Dr. Shankar Goenka, Chief Architect and Managing Director, India. Then we have Dr. Vijay Kumar S. Shah, Country Head Advisory Board, IIU, India, and Dr. T.P. Shashi Kumar, India. So I would like to now. Uh, I would like to ask you all, how are you all feeling today? Are you all excited to learn, to share a bit and to grow? I'm excited and with the same enthusiasm, I would like to talk about a bit about IIU. IIU International Internship University is building a better and brighter future for all young learners and committed to provide better and virtual education to all the young learners of the globe. IIU is metamorphosing the conventional education system by cutting down the additional cost and providing access to more than 10,000 courses and internship to their e-learners across 195 countries and six continents throughout the year with over 150 offices around the world. International Internship University, IIU, is united to our commitment to provide ex exclusively free education to all the children and to the youth of this world under this global hub. IIU has been accredited and affiliated with the World Education Organization, WEEO, and collaborated with all the world's top universities and educational institution through the platform of massive open online courses mooc iiu is providing various certificates diploma graduation post graduation diploma post graduate courses and honorary doctorates iiu has received many accreditations as per international standards for their innovation vision creative ideas research white papers publication as well as national patents. Now, talking about SDG, I want to throw some light on them. Sustainable development is development that meets the need of the present with compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. Thus, IIU invited all the interested stakeholders, innovative SDG leaders, schools, colleges, universities, organizations, government and non-governmental organizations for goal-wide deliveries. Today, we will be witnessing the plethora of ideas and knowledge delivered by experienced speakers, change makers, and become a part of this historic event conference showcasing the SDG goals aligned with the five pillars. By the end, I'm sure that we all will have many new competencies and tactics that we can put into action right away. 
one such conference and indeed a boon to our society is given by the collaborative efforts of the co-founders of IIU and Dr. Piyush Pandey. With the motive, we all are gathered here for our keynote speakers who will be sharing their ideas, views, techniques, ventures, and much more. I would like to give introduction of our highly experienced speakers now. Please enlighten us with our inspiring words. So our first speaker is Mr. Arup Barman from Professor, sorry, Professor Arup Barman from India, who is PhD and D-literate professor, Assam University, Silchar and IIU faculty member, 24 years in business administration, Assam University, Silchar. And he pursued successfully completed six diplomas and 10 diplomas on research and development. He is an author for more than 200 research papers, recipient of 409 congratulatory letter consecutive weeks and delivered more than 100 invited speech. Professor Berman is recipient of Best Faculty Member Award in 2011 MTC Global and Best Faculty Award 2013 ASDF Global and Distinguished Professor Award 2018 and Lifetime Achievement Award 2019. With this, I would like to invite and welcome Mr. Dr. Professor Arup Barman. Sir, the stage is all yours. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Professor, Mr. Arup Parman, are you there, sir, please? Professor Arup Parman, I think maybe he could not join us, so... Ma'am, ma'am, he, ma he joined, but I think due to some internet issues, actually, uh, he is not in the list now, but he joined. Okay, so... Uh, ma'am, we can't see him on screen. Yeah, so uh, I think we can continue with the next speakers. When he will join, he can give his speech later. Okay, so next we have our second speaker, who is again from India, Ms. Dr. Manoj Sehgal, who is BE Mechanical, VJTI Gold Medalist, MBA Finance, JBIMS, All India Rank 1, and PhD in Education. And he is currently in 25th year of teaching, having trained more than 1 lakh students in various entrance exams of India and studying abroad and uh, inter, uh, entrance exams like uh, CAT, GRE, GMAT, SAT and IIT, JE, CLAT and Hotel Management, MBA and CTAT. Sorry, uh, it's uh, CET and MHT Engineering, CET, BBA entrance for quants, logic, and GK group. So the stage is all yours. Mr. Manu Sagal. Mr. Manu Sagal. Yes, doctor. Sir, are you there? Dr. Manu Sagal. We can't see him on screen, ma'am. Okay, um, then let me move on to our third speaker. Okay, our third speaker is Samai Kamen Zachary Yusuf from Egypt. And he is, uh, sorry if I'm pronouncing any name like wrong. Uh, he's uh, licensed, uh, licensed senior teacher and international trainee 
Sohan School, and he is a trainer and IIT, and teach history and geography in secondary school, and a trainer in Microsoft and Discovery and Ministry of Education and many other places. And he is an ambassador for many organizations in peace and development, and volunteer in human rights in United Nations. I may come in, Zakir Yusuf. The stage is all yours. Samay Kamil from Egypt. Are you there, sir? Sorry, I think. Uh, yeah, just now, just within within a minute, it's coming. Uh, maybe uh, one internet issue is creating problem for us. So just just yeah, within. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So. Really, uh, I feel uh, sorry because of this uh, network problem, uh, because the technology speaks like that only. Uh, now, let me go to the, here again, I could not uh, share the slide because of this problem, and I have to transfer some of the things, issues. Uh, no doubt, uh, the slides uh, I wanted to share, Man, will, you, will you allow me one minute's time when mm -hmm. so that I can, I can find it out the uh, more Okay, okay, sir. sure. Sir. Yes. Agit. Okay. 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 More email Can you read, sir? Send, send, send. Hey, Send me up, send. Yes, Hello, yes, sorry, I will not be able to transfer the uh, slide here from one here to. Uh, let me uh, begin with this one. I really am uh, sorry for this uh, disturbance. Uh, the topic, uh, whatever is assigned me for this particular international uh, conference, it's really, really meaningful. And at the same time, it's wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, the seminar which is going on under the uh, patroness of the IIU. And at the same time, I uh, would like to thank to the enter the family uh, of the IIUs uh, for conducting uh, this uh, big uh, and marathon, uh, the international conference, as well as uh, the very, very uh, sensitive global issues. And uh, audiences, I have seen that this earlier also on the 27, I attended the meeting. Um, uh, conference I have delivered on the talk, of especially uh, on the ISDZ 8. Now, these times so I have got again the ISDZ, uh, this is the 12th ISDC issue. Uh, really, it's a wonderful uh, aspects of the or the dimensions which I would like to uh, tell uh, uh, on the issue of a ISDZ 12. Uh, 12 is on the concentration on responsible consumption responsible consumptions and uh, what i uh, want to uh, say is that they to begin with this one the responsible consumptions is all about the uh, basically the sustainable consumption 
as well as the sustainable production issues. We can start from the, suppose this uh, anywhere, from anywhere we can start it. The starting point will be the sustainable resource management. The, which, uh, the first point is the sustainable resource management. Uh, then another is that the design for sustainability uh, that is another sustainable resource management is triggering to the design for sustainability management then the cleaner productions then the sustainable transport eco leveling uh, or the certifications and the uh, sustainable procurement and issue of a sustainable marketing then the issue of a sustainable lifestyle then they again it will end it with the waste, man waste management uh, again it will go this is the cycle of a normally very very popular globally accepted and at the same time as per the international uh, this UNDC United Nations uh, development goals now the thing is that they even though this is very very widely discussed widely uh, researched and at the same time widely summarized by the policymakers, uh, the designers, uh, the thinkers, think tanks, or the NGOs, etc. Everywhere, everything's are uh, uh, they are in their uh, basically in the efforts. Now the thing is that they, while you take into the account of this one uh, of the issues, responsible consumption and the productions, something there is a missing. Maybe this is under the. The problems of entire world, there is a gap. The huge gap is what we I would like to tell is that the suppose the let us if we are going to begin, then spending for the acquisition. Okay. So acquisition here, the consumption will start from the spending for the acquisitions of the utility. That is the basic issue. If basic meaning, let us start with the basic meaning of the uh, consumption. What is the consumption? Consumption is nothing but it is a spending for the acquisition of the utility or the use of uh, use and uh, uh, utility uh, or, or, or the use of the goods and services by the household. Or at the same time, simply it is a const uh, contrast basically to the investment. It is a, the, uh, that is the consumption is a contrast to the investment and which is spending or acquisition of the future income. That means that is the basic gap. That means we are thinking about the sustainable consumption consumptions, but at the same time, while you think about the consumptions, then we have to go for the, uh, the aspects of the sustainable investment. Investment means in the form of the products, whatever we are going to consume today, that is we have to invest. And invest means in the form of the natural resources at the form of the raw uh, inputs. Raw inputs can be invested. And at the same time, at the time of daily lifestyle behavior, while you take into account, then also we have to think about our sustainable investment issues, investment. We are thinking on only consumption, at consumption while we restrict, then there will be a lot of the problems will emerge out and which we will not be able to give any concentration of our debt. So what is there? Now the philosophical gaps we have found. What is the philosophical gap? The whole world under the disease of the feel of esteem. This is the disease. This is the philosophy means it is a disease of the feel of the esteem through the consumption. Feel of esteem, feeling of the esteem through the consumption or in other words, consumption is a pride. We can only tell that I am consuming so much, so much. I am so rich. Actually, what is there? Consumers beliefs. It is a consumer beliefs are like that. More consumption is life. And the more marketing is a pride. And the more selling is a pride. And the more productions and the production competition is a price for us. Like that way we think. Now, this is the gap only. When I, though the problems is so serious, it is impacting even the global destructions because of that. And because of the consumption only, there is a terrorism issues. Because of the consumption only, because the, the high classes are normally consuming more and the poor classes could not consume more or equally, that is the problem. So that is the reason why what we like to tell that there is a gap in the philosophy and more is the production means more the extraction now. More extraction means more, again, more extraction leads to the more consumption of the necessary resources. Or at the same time, it is a lack of the inputs for the future ultimately. So that is the way we have to concentrate that we see just you see that why people are at the time of a very uh, big uh, uh, that is the uh, market so while you go for then the youths are normally happy only when they acquire more and more or they buy more and more this is the things now the middle class consumers are really irresponsive a global phenomenon of the basically of the materialism and this materialism consumers are now irresponsive 
at the macro level macro level the middle or the at the same time uh, ma macro level pictures while you see about the then the we can have we have to understand the middle class populace uh, so of their popular uh, that means the uh, so of their consumption power and at the same time uh, that that ultimately indicates that see high class people we are uh, near to you that means this middle class consumer we tell we are consuming more and we are nearby the high class people our identity we are not less than you our, our identity is not less than you but not investment but by consumption that means this what we are identifying ourselves what we are telling ourselves what uh, uh, how we are introducing all for that we are not investing but we are consuming and by incurring the expenditure we want to tell high class high class we are just nearer or we are equal to you now at the same time the youths are getting their satisfaction through consumption and that is this acquiring the more consuming more uh, acquiring more consuming more majority of the youths in the world try to justify that they are above the low or the middle uh, the middle class uh, at party or the at party or at party high class uh, like that so through the, through that particular philosophy it is there so now the consumption consumption become happiness actually consumption become happiness it is a global thoughtless philosophy is a global thoughtless philosophy producers in the world are equally responsible basically thoughtless philosophy because of that because the consumption somewhere another is a production and the producers in the world are equally responsible for infusing their uh, infusing or the stimulating some the consumption happiness philosophy consumption happiness philosophy that means through the advertisement or the feelings has been given in such a way producer introduces that philosophy that you trust consume and consume and die and die consume only and by this way resource also be then uh, degenerated and th that is you know, normally coming through the marketing and the producers uh, basically their feelings of a producer's greediness to become the profit giant or the sales giant market leader and finally all these threads normally speaks about the responsibility of the producers from the supply side and at the same time responsibility of the consumer from the demand side so these issues are coming from the demand side and the supply side and while we go for the demand side and supply side now the few style actual practice is happening in the world and it is this considering the demand and the supply side responsible consumptions and they are attracting the scientists, attracting the policymakers, attracting the consumers, attracting governments or the think tanks, researchers, students, teachers, citizens, medias, everyone. Innumerable reports are created and the innumerable consulting and the seminars are done during the last phases and the workshops, researchers, what not had been done on the issues of the uh, issue uh, of uh, basically the consumption, responsible consumption. And they are uh, normally, uh, when people are doing and busy with this thinking and thinking, and we are also now at this moment also, we are also thinking about that issue that, okay, about the responsible consumption, responsible production, but the impact of all these could not generate any responsibility uh, uh, for the optimum consumption, for the consumer's point and the optimum production from the demand points, from the demand side, consumer point or demand side, there's no responsibility, nobody is taking, because we are telling that responsibility for everyone. The philosophy is like that, through these efforts, we are telling that it is the responsibility of the consumers, it is the responsibility of producers, it is the responsibility of everyone, but everyone's responsibility is nobody's responsibility. Very, very simple fact. Very, very simple fact is that the, again, the global intellectual gap I would like to tell. Now, this world under the dementia of responsibility, because they more will be demons, uh, more will be responsibility thinking, then we will have a dementia problem. Dementia means we will forget. We will be only we will be full up with the only responsibility. But what responsibility is? Nothing, actually. We could not define ourselves. And that is there is an entire world under the disease of the theoretical and logical dementia. Theoretical and log logical dementia and responsibility and the responsibility and the only responsibility cannot create any impact and everyone's responsibility is becoming to the no one's jobs that is the ultimately implications and logical and practical theoretical gap of accountability is not there now simple thing is that the if there is a responsibility then there should be accountability whom we are giving responsibility to the consumer is there any I tell I can tell to the United Nations UN DG UN DG UN DG means United Nations Development Goals itself the United Nations can I ask that the is there any consumers uh, accountability any concept been introduced 
I think at this moment, the international, our international interns at university can take that the consumers should have the responsibility, the account, uh, accountability and consumers accountability can be assessed, can be modified, uh, can be, we can implement and we can go for a legal, uh, these things, uh, uh, that means the backup for this purpose also. So the gap of this accountability is not there. That means that we, uh, we have not introduced responsibility is fine, but not the accountability. Accountability means while I am consuming for this particular cotton shirt, I should be accountable this accountability in a year how much i am consuming for that accountability is myself so accountability means giving the account that means any consumers he is consuming in a year he should be accountable accountable means he should give the accounting means numbers and descriptions and statements of the consumption how many of us are thinking how many petrols are now we are consuming petrols consumptions or any other consumption as a consumer of the entire global citizens are you giving any account to the world. This is the consumers or the responsible consumption issue. Accountability is major, major and serious issue. We are not taking at all interest in the entire globe is only blind, only in throwing the responsibility, but why we could not introduce ourselves by a mechanism, by a system and about the accountability that this must. And again, no, no doubt the accountability of the consumers and the producers, we are, we can again the conceptually think, but of the scientists, policymakers, government, politicians, think tank, researchers, students, teachers, citizens, or at the same time media, this is about this accountability, when it has to promote the accountability of the families, accountability of the parents, accountability of the children, accountability of the every individuals. Uh, that is the thing that is the gap and we are not doing at all and therefore what i understand is that the, it is the fine time that the entire the global community now is present at this global community we can think conceptualized and accountability in the context of the responsible consumption and therefore i would like to propose for the implementing the consumption accounting the new subjects under the iiu IIU, as because I am also a part of the International Internship University, uh, Internship University. So at this moment, I would like to request the other members and the honorable members of the uh, IIU family. Uh, we should promote about the consum uh, consumption accounting or the accounting for the consumptions. And the, that there comes ultimately we can think about the sellers accounting and the producers accounting. That means the, they have to give accounting means giving the brief description. It, what, how many how many things we have given we have we are giving allowing to consume that it requires something control and this control is necessary again I would like to propose a serious consumption accounting in this line serious consumption accounting along with the philosophy of abundance because if if we are under the scarcity economics if we are under the material economics then possession become our identity I don't believe on the possession become the this should be the identity in the art because the position cannot be the identity, identity is somewhere different. So the positions through the positions, if we try to give this, this one, then ultimately philosophical mismatch will be there. So we have to promote again the, the consumption accounting along with the abundance, abundance reporting, abundance. What do we have? Why we should buy a next one? Why should we should buy next one? Why we should buy the next items? Well, why for it is necessary many a time many a time because if it is the consumption is the philosophy and that is the reason why more consumption more consumptions that become an identity so that is the reason why we create then abundance reporting if there is an abundance reporting from the family side automatically controlling will be there that yes if we are purchasing okay in the place of two why we are purchasing three that should be accountable i should be accountable enough so like this way the philosopher policymaker tanks and the ngos uh, all uh, let the address the problems of the irrational uh, consumptions uh, uh, or the irrational consumption through the controlling of a, a consumption accounting and the, because the responsibility will be meaningful only when there is accountability that i understand and at this way what we would like to i would like to tell at the conclusions of my this particular deliberations i would like to tell let us invest instead of irrational consumption invest means if we postpone our consumption just now for the next at least the one month we can protect that resources it's not coming to my house is it not or not coming to the market like this way let us only the this is the postponement of this some of the consumption itself can be a big investment for the entire art and at the same time let us innovate for this because the productions at the time if we are postponing then the innovation will be coming because this demand sides 
when it is there they have to give the optimum justified product for the art it is a justification for the art that is rational for the art and if this rational of the art they have to given and for the consumers uh, sustainability matters is coming or the consumption sustainability issues will come then automatically the innovation will be very very serious and each and every moment every consumer will also think about the innovation then it will come as a co-creation because the consumer will also think along with the production otherwise the producers are ruling our whole brain but if we consumers are postponing then consumers productions uh, consumers will take in the co-creation process and finally it will rule in a different way because then it will come with the solidarity economy like that so there is a question of the sustainability of this entire issues will come then they let us uh, let us use the concept again the the consumption postponement is it not and let the spread let us spread the accountability of the consumption instead of the responsibility and through the policy practice promotions and permeability and technology and the wisdom without the wisdom it will not be there and at the same time take the technological promotions and as the uh, permeability or the technological wisdoms that if we do not use then ultimately there is a no responsibility we can discharge it for this art so as it is the very serious issue that is the reason why i would like to promote at this moment. So I could have shared this particular slide, but I have prepared it very nicely. I think I can uh, share it later on. Uh, also, suppose the 4P, 4P here, what I am going to give the definition under this one, 4P within bracket T and W. P and W means 4P means here, through the policy, through the practice, through the promotion, through the permeability, and through the, again, within bracket, that will be happening through what? If we introduce with the technology and the wisdom, then with this one, we can control, we can be accountable and we can create the accountability means accounts that report. That means once it's buying even the one liter of petrol, he should have the a consumer, consumer should have the statements of the buying. The statement of the buying should be there and governments should have to, uh, all the government in the entire world, they should have a compulsory votes that how much you are buying. How much for what purpose you have brought is it not so that will be there and under this 4p uh, within bracket uh, that is the 2 t of the w this particular theorem can help us because the everywhere suppose the for policy also technology for practice also we can use the technology for promotion also we can use the technology and for the permeability also we can use the technology and for that reasons at the and at the same time the technology can be used with the with the wisdom so that is the things and i use i i wish that our the honored the the all the members present here honored members of the entire globe uh, can help us or at the same time can we we are we can take the collective uh, the duties for the accounting for the applications of the accounting in the world as a consumers as a consumers means the whole entire world globe everyone is a consumer at any level everyone is a consumer only so the as a consumers consumers accountability we have to promote instead of the responsibility of the consumptions and with this one i would like to conclude my speech and the deliberation it is the global view and at the same time it is my view uh, we should uh, reach to this one because the concept i have seen that the philosophical gap one and at the same time practice and application gaps is there and at the same time the technical gaps are also there and the policy think tanks also they are creating the gap, big gap ultimately we are shouting and shouting years together uh, for the again we are putting the deadlines up to 2030 if we put only the push the responsibility and responsibility generation after generation it will come the 2030 will be again targeted to the 2050 but it will never reach but once we are accountable by mind by idea and the wisdom along with the technology and the policies then automatically the controls will be very nice and with this one i would like to uh, thank to the iiu uh, the family members and uh, for uh, thank you <laughs> <laughs> All the audiences for the present here, and at the same time, I have given you disturbance. Sorry for this, and good evening, and at the same time, uh, good afternoon, and a good morning to everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor Arup Barman. And um, actually, he is from my state, so sir, khub bhal lagile. Oh yes. <laughs> yes.
he is but, from my state so just uh, i interacted with him a uh, very uh, like i just told him ki it was really a wonderful uh, concept which he shared so actually it was indeed a very good concept which he shared uh, the best is like i really like when he said more conjunction means more extraction so this is so true so yes. if we all become responsible consumers then definitely we can achieve the target yes Okay. So for this, um, I would like to call our fourth speaker, Shetali K. Uh, Suri from India, um, Director Visionary Ways. Uh, Shetali is a renowned educationist and uh, academician. She has enlightened the education world and has a work experience of fifteen years. and is working in renowned school of india and a founder of vision visionary ways an education con, educational consultancy of for rural uh, schools in india she has also many laurels and recognition in her name best principal awardee for 3 years in a row and awarded by shrimati smriti irani uh, by shrimati smriti irani for best practices in education and a board member for of some of the recognized educational institution three honorary doctorate from foreign university member of social reform club so ms chetali k suri ma'am the stage is all yours ma'am are you there Mr. Shetali Suri, there Ranjana Nada is here. I come. Good evening. Uh, so, uh, so we don't have her now uh, on the stage, but I would uh, want to call our special guest because he can be here our whole event. Uh, so, our special guest is Doctor. Abdullah Rashid he is a minister of the state of education of Maldives uh, today he join us uh, with the topic the role in education in achieving the sdg 12 uh, before he starts speech i would like to introduce him uh, dr abdullah rashid is a very very enthusiastic educationist with 30 years experience in the field of education he is currently working as a minister of state for education maldives uh, before that he was a vice rector of avid college maldives he served as a principal in many government schools he has a diploma from sri lanka a bachelor of commerce major in accounting from university in tasmania Uh, he had great achievements he was awarded a many many awards academic excellence award uh, from university a dean role of excellence from university uh, also he get awards from president of maldives the kwisu abra him uh, we can talk a lot about our dr abdullah rashid dr abdullah rashid the stage is yours Hello everyone. Thank you, Nada. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, IIU, for uh, organizing this important uh, event. Uh, in fact, uh, education for sustainable development 2030 uh, is very important, whether it is a school or university or college. Uh, for for the whole world, achieving sustainable development goals are very important. Uh, as nada has mentioned that i'm going to talk about the uh, importance of uh, the role of education in achieving sustainable development goals as you know uh, years back uh, education was just providing knowledge uh, but now the situation is different knowledge and information is everywhere it is in our fingertips uh, and the teacher is not only the source of knowledge therefore just to provide in the knowledge has no use and it's, it it shouldn't be the way of teaching rather than doing that 
we have to teach the students uh, to nurture them, to mold them, change their behavior. So now is uh, the whole world has a responsibility to achieve uh, ESD 2030. So through education, we have to focus uh, to change the student's behavior, achieving uh, these goals. As today's goal is uh, sustainable uh, consumption and sustainable uh, production. We all have to think globally and act locally. We should understand that uh, every individual's behavior has an impact to this globe. Sometimes we may think, okay, there is nothing I could do. I'm only one person or I, I, I come from just one city or one town. No, even the smallest deed and smallest action has impact. Therefore, we all should understand what is happening around the world. Then we have to behave uh, responsibly. As we are talking about uh, sustainable uh, consumption, the famous three R, we all know that. Then what we need to do is through education, we have to convince the students uh, to keep in mind, uh, reduce, reuse, and recycle. So these three R is very important. And when students are, uh, when students and all the, uh, whether school students or university students, uh, after using uh, any kind of uh, service or any goods, then the, we have to safely manage the waste. Some people, they just throw or the uh, Milo packet or, or a bottle or rubber and plastic, all these things. So we have to convince and we have, we have to change their behavior and their thinking that we should take the responsibility of what we use and the safe uh, waste management is very, very important. And uh, even the previous speaker has mentioned that uh, overconsumption, that, that really in force the overproduction. So this production includes a lot of uh, issues to the environment, the emission of greenhouse gases, and over, over utilization of the resources. As we all know, some resources are non-renewable. Once it is finished, it means that's depletion. There is no way to get it back. Even other renewable uh, resources, it, it takes years to come. Therefore, we have to think about the sustainable way, meaning that this world doesn't belong to us. Our, our ancestors has given this world to us to lead, and to develop the world and take it back to the future generation. Future generation should not suffer because of our action. Our action should be uh, favorable for the future uh, generation. When it comes to the uh, sustainable production, the production should be eco-friendly. The production should uh, not use uh, energy which leads emission of greenhouse gases and also think about the in environment. So if sustainable uh, production is maintained everywhere, then uh, the, the world will be safer uh, and it will be more sustainable. Therefore, to conclude, I can say uh, the education is once again, uh, not only imparting the knowledge, it is just to change the behavior and inculcating the values if proper values and knowledge and skills are provided, then our young people uh, will be competent people who are responsible, who love, this, who love the, their world, who love their community and uh, try to save the environment. If this does not happen, it will be really difficult to achieve sustainable development goals. So once again, thank you uh, everyone.
this is a very important work that you are doing, promoting uh, sustainable development goals. So collectively, if everyone is trying to achieve these goals, then it will be possible. If you, if you think it's, this is the responsibility of the UN, or if this is the responsibility of the uh, world leaders, policy makers, no. This is everybody's responsibility. This is a collective responsibility. But sometimes when the responsibility is collective responsibility, people believe that uh, it, it, there is even saying that everybody's responsibility is nobody's responsibility. But for this one, uh, we should not do that. Everybody should take the responsibility. Uh, thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abdullah Rashid. Thank you for your bright thoughts, for your views, because we all know that education is important for all of us. And even we are talking about SDG 1, 5, 7, 10, now today responsible consumption in production. How can we talk about anything if we don't have globally a production? That is something what we need. We all know that many factors are uh, are closed and everything is going uh, uh, like uh, doing uh, something. Uh, we uh, the main conclusion is that we don't produce the main things. Uh, here today, uh, please, uh, you can be free to ask uh, our doctor Abdullah Rashid if you have any questions. Uh, uh, about uh, education and this topic in correlation with SDG. What do you think and why is education important for this SDG goal? Why? Because we all know today, everybody wants to be a lawyer, a doctor, uh, a teacher, professor. Today, nobody don't want to be a worker or in special vet, vet professionals. Vocational education is very important. And our students today uh, are, not, uh, doing, uh, are not going in that school, but that is why we miss production today. So please be free everybody and ask a question. Dr. Elizabeth, I see in the chat that you write, please be free and ask a question. Did anybody wants to ask something or write in the chat? So we will comment that. Please. Okay, I, let me say, I, let me just say, uh, I agree to what Dr. Abdullah have said, because behavior is very, very important. We've seen so many people graduated and their behavior is totally not really cooperative with what they've studied. And it's one thing to study especially in university or colleges. It's another thing to develop ourselves. And that is why personal development is very important. So thank you very much, Dr. Abdullah, for enlightening us again concerning this. I really appreciate that. I'm learning. Thank you, Dr. Nader. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, Dr. Elizabeth. Uh, it's really our pleasure to have uh, Dr. Uh, Abdullah here with us. So uh, I'm very sad because uh, uh, please, uh, please ask, uh, please ask him some questions. We are here all to learn something new and get a real and correct information. Uh, I will tell something. IAU is offering many, many courses. Not of that all courses are, was, as I said, like uh, doctors, lawyers, but you can be a specialist in some kind of field. Who said, if you have uh, plants uh, of uh, grapes, oranges, uh, apples, you can, uh, you can finish a course in IAU because we have health, 
nutrition and many courses. That is what I'm asking together because from that kind of courses, you can achieve this SDG goal 12, production. So, I can't believe that we don't have nobody else to talk. Yes, yes. Ma'am, yes, I am. I want to. Uh, uh, Mr. Yeah. Arupa Barman, I know yeah. you can talk. You talk a lot, so <laughs> you can start. <laughs> <laughs> only, only, only on this issue because you are telling that nobody wants to talk, but I want to talk. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. This is uh, what you were giving the information about the responsible production and productions by the go to the field or knowing of that. These are the basics. These are the basics, no doubt. But when it is coming about the multinational productions, the questions of the multinational productions and at the productions by the giant where the mass mass production issues are coming, then automatically the responsibility is there. That only. Our agricultural fields are because of this. This is attractive. So now, how to how to control of that? That is the issue. Once we are consumers, can we not from the consumers' behavior? Because the consumers' behavior means again, I told the children, even the I mean, home to Tom, this can be implemented. Home to them, Tom, they all are consumers. Even at that eh, at the home also there is a consumer, and up to the level of a Tom also there is a consumer. All are consumers. So how can we make them responsible? And that is the issue of what you are telling me. And along with that, uh, mane, uh, the, uh, the uh, speakers, just the speaker also same. Uh, mane, how to now control is that? How to make the accountable even from home to home? And that if we take it automatically, consumers are producers. Producers are consumers later on. So can we make it anything? Can we do with the help of our collective efforts, can we make it something awareness on this? Is there any right answer for this? Ma'am, with this question only, okay. Thank you, Dr. Arabaran. Hello. 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 Good evening, Dr. Virendra Kumar Verma here. Welcome. Yeah, I want to just address a comment or a question. Can you speak a little louder? See, the, my opinion is consumer cannot control the growth or the such thing because it is very difficult to motivate them or force them. It has to come from the government and the multinationals who control the government in any way. So we have to make some kind of law, international law, an equitable distribution of wealth and knowledge. Then only these things can be controlled. Sustainable growth and the environmental problem can be resolved for our future generation. That is my opinion. Okay, thank you. Dr. Abdullah, uh, what, uh, do you have something to say uh, after this uh, speeches or questions? Conclusions. Did we lose Dr. Abdullah? Maybe, yes, I don't see him. Okay, okay. So we will continue with our speakers. Will we continue with the speakers, please? Speaker, will you be calling them, Nada? Speaker number one, two, and three could not come. Okay, okay, that's not a problem. Maybe they will join us uh, after this, no problem. Who is the next, please? Let's go to the next. So now I think we have the courses of IIU. Video. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So we will we will go uh, on this. Uh, yes. 
so uh, IAU is metamorphosing the conventional education system by putting down the additional costs and providing access to more than 10,000 courses and internships to their e-learning across uh, all of the world, all countries and all continents. Uh, through this year, over 150 offices around the world, IAU is united in our commitment to provide exclusively free education. Yes, our co-founder, Mr. Piyush, wants this free education, and we have uh, many courses uh, yet free. Uh, also, IAU has been accredited and affiliated with the World Education Organization, VEO, and collaborated with all the world's top universities and educational institutions through the platform of Massive Open Online Courses, MEOOC. Uh, that is very important because uh, IAU is the uh, only uh, virtual university that has uh, many massive open online courses. Only for SDG, there are more than 100 courses. Uh, also, IAU is providing various certificate, diploma, graduation, post graduation diploma, uh, post graduation courses, and honorary doctorate. Please, honorary doctorates, uh, the no, new convocation will be very soon and all of you are free to apply for this honorary uh, convocation, doctorate. Uh, also, IAU has received uh, many accreditations as per international standards to their innova innovation because IAU is innovative, uh, has a great uh, vision very, very creative ideas are coming from creative people. Uh, many researchers, the journal, uh, we have a journal uh, which all uh, the researchers are published, uh, also as well as national patents. Uh, so uh, I would ask uh, our technical support to play a video about uh, my youth courses. What is education? Books? Classes? Teachers? Schools? No. Education is not that. It's beyond this. Education is a term that we have grown up listening to since we were kids. Right from the beginning of childhood till this very moment, we have been surrounded by education and its need and importance. A luxury for the rich. A necessity for the bread earner. A dream for the underprivileged. An aspiration for the suppressed. A distant reality for the inaccessible. The primary objective of education is to impart knowledge. Education also has its fair share in building the thinking capacity of people's minds. Hence, education supplies people with knowledge and facts and also encourages them to integrate that acquired knowledge into practical and professional lives via necessary training. Education thus also plays a primary role in supporting the economic, social and cultural sector of a country. It's a way to change the future today. The current education system can make people easy to lead, but difficult to drive, is either all academic, all physical, all virtual or all costly. Also, it makes easy to govern, but impossible to enslave. We cannot win over the future by sabotaging our present with extreme disparity. IIU takes great pride in saying that we're bridging the gaps in education system. We're not just academicians, but also practically oriented. 
We're not just limited to virtual classes, but also physical exposure. We do not dig a hole in the pockets of the students and their families. We're everything that traditional education hasn't been. IIU has already implemented and promoting the MOOCs technology. When we talk about MOOCs technology, it stands for Massive Open Online Courses. The word massive is to be understood in the sense that 100,000 learners or more at the same time have open and equal opportunities to attend these courses. MOOCs are truly a tremendous technological leap, and what makes them so attractive is that they don't imply any cost to learners. IIU has tied up with more than 100 universities to provide more than 10,000 courses to the students, free of cost, with the help of MOOCs technology. We're a revolution in the making, a wind of change. Education is much more charming and intriguing than the temptations of distractions unnecessary. Our education policymakers must look into the problem to make a better system, which is more practical, and provides hands-on learning to the students. Who are we? The International Internship University is a virtual university with state-of-the-art curriculum, real-life industry exposure, amazing student attention, learning-oriented resources, and most of all, a commitment to make the world a better place. Why do we exist? We exist to fulfill the necessity of the bread earner. We exist to help underprivileged achieve their dreams. We exist to fuel aspirations and accessibility. We exist to provide everyone the luxury of being capable of changing the world. We really do exist to ignite young minds and make them the torchbearers of tomorrow. For a better future. For the legacy of everyone who's left us. For the hope of everyone who's yet to come and for the growth of everyone who walks this beautiful planet. We invite you to join our world-class educational team and platform with an altruistic dedication to creating the future. The change is so big that it would potentially impact millions across the world. Millions of children and youth around the world cannot wait any longer. Please join us in our effort to create the virtual learning generation of IIU. We're IIU. We're change. Welcome to our world. A new tomorrow. We are IIU, we are changes, we are making changes, every day are making changes, that is why are we here talking about the SDGs and taking some light of sustainable development because development that meets the needs of present without compromising the ability of future for the future generations and meet their own needs. Uh, so, we said at the beginning that we are here for who? For our speakers. That is why we have a conference and indeed it boon a society to give a collaborate effort. I would like to call our next speaker. Uh, I, uh, I look in the chat and uh, I see that our next speaker is Professor Jared Akama Onijari from Kenya, PhD researcher, professor, United Graduate College Seminary International. Uh, Dr. Jared is a servant of God, is a servant of God of the everlasting gospel. He's a trained lay chaplain, a certified professional mediator, and a big environmental impact assessment lead expert. So today we will hear a great speech of the environmental impact on production and its consumption. Also, he has many, many awards. He's a 
peace ambassador. He's a president of Peace Society of Kenya, uh, president of association, president of chaplains, international chaplains. I could talk about Professor Researcher Jared Akama Onijari from Kenya till tomorrow. Professor Jared, uh, the stage is yours and welcome on IAU stage. Thank you, Nada, for introducing to me to speak. And I want to say that I want to observe all the protocols. And uh, for the interests of my speakers uh, and my, the people hearing me here is that uh, this is the subject which is very key to me very close to my heart. And I want to say that man was created for response spirit. You are, we are not in this world, we don't find ourselves as an accident. We are created by response spirit. Genesis chapter one, verse 28, we were created to be stewards. We were created to be dominion. We were created to take care of God's creation. So when we talk about responsible, goal number one, number 12, uh, responsible consumption and production. And I want to say that as we were ushering in sustainable development goals in 2015, we had action 2015. We were to reflect on how we did on Millennium Development Goals, MDGs. And then we say that let us not leave anyone behind as we are moving from to 2030. And what I could have expected to hear the speakers who have spoken from goal number one, I could have wanted to hear what they have done in their respective countries. What we have done is most of academic exercise. And I wanted to have that comparative from other countries and you say, this is what we have done in Kenya. This is what we have done in India. This is what we have done in Croatia. In this, it will give us some energy to, for us to move forward. So I'm saying to be responsible is to be, a, to be dependable, keeping promises and honoring our commitments. Our commitment is, and this is what my grandmother told me and it just never gotten out of me that if I do not want to make the world better, then I leave it the way I found it. And I could see my grandmother, I never knew that in terms of that, as she was trying to, to practice sustainable, uh, responsible consumption and production. Because I come from Africa, we eat ugari. Ugari is uh, bread made from maize. We will eat food in the evening, the one which remains in the morning is what we use to take with, uh, with practice and that as, as bread. It means that whatever was being produced will need to be consumed. And I proceed to say that to be responsible is to do things you are supposed to do. I have said our responsibility is to take care of the environment. And if we don't want to do anything to improve it, or, or, to improve it let us leave it as we found it. You will be a better person. That's what my grandmother told me. Responsibility is being accountable for one is actual and to know for various rules and laws and the conduct codes. What we are trying to see, to say that if we are not responsible, if we don't take care of the environment, the consequences are regrettable. And I want to quote, the late Professor Wangari Madai, the Nobel Prize, the first African woman to get the Nobel Prize, she said that nature, if you joke with nature, if we don't become responsible in terms of our consumption, in terms of our production, nature never forgets. Nature never forgives. Nature will eventually destroy you. We are saying that uh, without compromising. Compromising is a better word. When we talk about sustainable development using today's resources for our needs, without compromising. Compromising is a better word. Why can't we say denying? Why can't we say destroying? Why can't we say sabotaging? 
there are some animals like rats, like dogs, which gives uh, birth to their young ones and mm -hmm. they, they end up eating them. So when we don't have responsible consumption, when we don't have responsible production, it means we are eating our children. Life is like a relay. We have got a pattern. It has been handed over to us. How are we going to hand over the, 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 the next generation? So I am trying to say, and I want to submit this way, that accountability is very key. Let us produce what we are able to consume. Let us produce what we are able to produce, what we are able to use. And for us to succeed in having responsible consumption and production, I recommend it is education. Yeah. Number two, it is education. Number three, it is education, meaning we have to make people aware. And when we make people aware, we are empowering them to know that it is our responsibility to hand over a secure environment to the next generation. And in doing this, we have said that we said, let us not leave anyone behind. Let us have popular participation. That's what my professor tells me. Uh, it tells me that uh, we have to allow people to participate. Let us not talk about responsible consumption and production in class. Can't we go to the grassroots where people are? and tell them if we don't do this, we are destroying the generations to come. And in this, when people are aware, then we can proceed. And I want to conclude by saying, my grandmother said that if you have to succeed in life, the best you can do is to be contact with what's happening. Are you in the grassroots of your country, in your area, in your village, in your city, in your town to see what's happening? Are you seeing how people produce things that which they are not able to consume? Are you seeing people producing things which they don't need? Are you becoming concerned? Are you becoming concerned? Are you trying to care that there's a generation which is coming after us? Are we living as if we are the last generation which is living? Are we compassionate to what's, happen what's going to happen? Are we going to have compassion to our children's children? And then I conclude by saying, time has come for us to rethink on what we want to do the world. Time has come for us to rethink on how we consume. Time has come to, for us to rethink on how we produce some of the goods for our industries, for our own use, and with the people who pollute the environment. Time has, for, has come for us, some of the, this one, one of the speakers who talked about the circular economy. And we say that some of the what we consider as waste still can be used as 70% as raw materials for the next level. And I'm trying to say thrust or waste is worth. And I'm saying do we repurpose to do things in a better way than we have done? Are we going to reuse the way my grandmother lived many generations, but she knew that if we have eaten food and we have used it, we, we, have, we have some as men, we can still use it? Are we going to do things which are going to do, which is going to rot? When we do farming, do we remove the, 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 the raft of us and burn? Can't we allow it to recycle? Can we repurpose uh, the correctly to repair the world where we have damaged? Are we going to engineer the way we do things? Time for us has come for us to reconstruct. We have done a lot of damage to the environment. And time has come for us to rebuild. And time has come for us to refocus because we are not focused. My fellow uh, people who are participating with me here. I am going to stop here by saying that Humanity, we are waging war on nature. And I've said we are not going to be, we are not going to have responsible consumption and responsible production. It means we are waging war. And we are going to wage war. This is very suicidal. We are committing suicide. The consequences of our reckless are already apparent in the human survival. You can see the effects of the climate change. We go and destroy the environment. We destroy the forest and get 
the trees and the timber which we don't need. We are going to be a generation which is going to be remembered that we did not earn the pattern properly. Thank you for listening to me and I submit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, the time, time is important. I hear time and it's in my head clapping. I want a big clap and applause for our Dr. Jared. Please, everybody, please. <laughs> uh so uh, uh this uh, this speech was uh, for all of us important like dr elizabeth in the chat uh writes and many our here participants these are the answers on the questions what we are trying to answer alone you gave us this thank you thank you so much and I really want to see you very soon and hear much about this topic or another topic because uh, in Kenya and other countries, uh, poor countries, this is very, very important. Thank you. Oh, well. Thank you, so thank you. Uh, Dr. Elizabeth, do you have maybe uh, something uh, else to tell or uh, Ambassador Suraya Bano? Sorry, no, I have nothing else to say. I'm leaving now. Thank you so much, Dr. Nada. I need to leave now. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed the study. Thank you so much, Professor. Uh, on Yeri, thank you so much. Thank you for everything you are all teaching us today. I've learned a lot. I'm sorry, I just need to leave now. Thank you. You see, Professor Jared, that nobody, uh, uh, we are all very, very uh, satisfied, excited with your speech and can't ask nothing. <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you. Thank you for coming on IIU Big Stage. Now I would ask my co-host, Jana, to call the next speaker. The next speaker is here. I see him in the room. <coughs> the next speaker is from HANA Confidence, uh, who is BSc in Accounting and CEO and founder Nexus Professional. Mr. Confidence Edgy is again a highly motivated and result oriented graduate of the University of Professional Studies and Transforming. Transformation that is a master career and trainer coach, and he's a world He's also a life coach, he's off and direct position, and also he is specialized in dealing with financial and physical relationship issues. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to take the opportunity to thank each and everyone, especially IIU, for giving me the chance to be able to bring out my view on the SDGs. Yeah, it's been great, Anna. First of all, I have to also thank the pre speakers, those who have already dealt with the SDG 1 up to 11, and the co-speakers here, right here. I salute all of you. You've been wonderful. You all speak my mind, but still, I also have something related to other reports you have done, and that's good. So we are talking about consumption and production, how to actually bring the two in terms of sustainability. Can I be heard clear? Okay, so with that, my, my little, or what I simply put about production means bringing something into existence. If you bring something into existence, you are producing. Then in terms of consumption, you are taking something out of existence. So you don't want the thing to be in existence. 
So within these two, it means there is a common word known as existence. You bring the thing into existence, you take the thing out of existence. So now, how are we going to bring that existence in terms of sustainability? We all know that when we talk about sustainability, it means something that will be more important, something that is relevant some for a foreseeable future. Now, we are to, I'll talk about the production phase before moving to the consumption. So when we talk about sustainable production, when you look at the world now, everybody stand up to produce. And we don't even know the reason why they are producing. They are just producing because they needed to produce. Is that the case? No. So with this, I'll also link it to what? Knowledge. And before you can get knowledge, then there is a need for what? Education. You can only get knowledge when you are educated. You can only get knowledge of something when you are educated. So now, what happens is that there is a need for holistic education. When we are able to get that holistic education, then we will be able to know how to produce sustainably. Now, what are the factors that lead to what? Sustainable production. First of all, why are you producing this particular item or goose? That should be the first factor. Why? Or oh, let me use it question. Why do you need to produce this particular product? With that, it's going to give you the importance of bringing into existence the particular product. Now, who are the target third consumers or who are going to use the product? Who are the people? So when you are able to identify the target consumers, then your production will be sustainable because you are going to produce to suit the targeted consumers. Then now, what is the benefit, the end benefit of your production? That's the third one. What is the end benefit of your production? For instance, you are producing a car. Maybe your targeted market, the reason is to help mobilize like mobility easily. So now you want people to get to a place at ease. That's the reason why you are producing the car. Now, who are the targeted market for that particular car? Is it the people living in the city? Is it the people who are in government? Is it the people who are in the private sector? Is it the people who are into business? Is it for household? Is it for schools? So if you're able to identify that particular target market, you will now ask yourself, when I produce this car, after 10 years, if the car is not being used, what can they use the car for? Or what can they reuse the car for? If this is in mind, then it means you are doing a sustainable production. Because what is going to happen is that you produce for the purpose of what? A targeted market. But the, uh, uh, the estimated period of the product, the product is being used to gain another uh, product for which it have not been thrown into the environment. With this one, it will be linked to something we call the circular economy. That's the economy from production through consumption, going back to recycling, coming back to all production. So with that, there is a circle where at every point in time, the product is not just dumped after use, just dumped into the environment, but rather it's been reused into something that is beneficial. Now, 
when it comes to sustainable consumption, that one is now peculiar to what? The consumers. The producers or the suppliers have done their part sustainable production. They think of why they are producing among others. Now we, the consumer, how do we consume sustainably? First, you must even know the use for the product you are buying. A lot of people buy products for which they don't know what they use for. Just they are buying it because of social status. Maybe I've seen Professor Charles <laughs> buying a particular car, so me too, I want to buy. For which I, you, I don't know the reason why Professor Charles knows that particular, like love that particular car or what he's going to use it for. But because I want to, like, you know, <laughs> the social status, I'm also going for it. At the thing, and he will be using the car sustainably. But with the same car, I'm going to use it unsustainably, which means it, it might, because I'm not using it efficiently, it's going to cause damage to the environment. We come back to what? Education, because I don't have knowledge of why he's using it. But I just presume, presume that, oh, he's using this car because he's a big man. So if I also use that car, I'll be considered a big man. No. Now, people tend to waste because they have the money. They thought, oh, because I have the high income earnings, I can choose to buy anything and just dump it to show that, oh, I have money. But with that one, you are not thinking that what you are doing is actually causing damage to the environment. So consumers also need to know the reason why they are buying this car. The second element is to be able to determine what can I use, what I'm buying for after it exhausted its estimated period. So they need to think about what the recycling in the future. So if you, are, if you are able to think about what, the reusable idea of what you are buying today, then it means you are actually contributing to what, a sustainable consumption. People just go to bathroom, open the shower, for almost 30 to one hour, they are under the shower for nothing, just because they have the money to get the uh, water. What about the water shortage that is hitting other countries? What about the water shortage that is hitting the area close to you? Don't you think that is because you use almost 10 buckets or 10 gallons of water per day, uh, per day that is actually leading to the shortage in that particular area? So suppose those who use 10 gallons a day decide to use two gallons a day. What is going to happen? Eight gallons will be available to be used by others. I always say that it's not the number of hours or the number of gallons you use in the bathroom that determine that you are clean or not. It's the quality of what bathing that you take. <laughs> I mean the quality because somebody can actually bath 10 gallons but when the person pass by you, <laughs> you will feel that the person never bath about one week. So does it mean that is Because if it is the number of gallons that you use, then I will say that fishes, the aquatic animals, are the cleanest things on earth, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Because they are in the water every blessed day. <laughs> they are in the water every day. But fishermen go to fish, and we actually wash them again and cook. So why do we pick something from water and still wash them and cook? Just yes, because we know that it's not being in water that makes you clean, but rather the quality, the way you use the water that will actually make you clean. Now, whenever it, it comes to we, those who goes to the fast food to go and buy food and all those. 
Now we can say that when you are going, some people will go, you say they won't watch it, our local food. <laughs> they won't watch it. They put it in one of the polythene rubbers or a bag. Now you see the person tidying the same food in one rubber and you want another rubber, which is now white. After tidying, you use another rubber to tie it again before carrying it. So he alone, he is using almost four rubbers to the house. Now, after removing the food, he don't know how you use the rubber for, he just dump it into the environment. So in, in short, I'm just saying that in terms of sustainable production and uh, consumption, at the side of the producers, three elements. Know why you are producing this. Know whom you are producing the thing to. And the third one, after the estimated life of the thing, how can it be converted to a reusable item? For the consumption aspect, know why you need or why you are buying this particular thing. The second one is, what would that thing bring to you? What is bringing to you? Is it actually beneficial to others? If it is beneficial to others, then you are good to go. Then the third one is, what can I use that thing for after it exhausted its estimated life? So now we are just going to do a simple <laughs> exercise over here. So all those who are in favor that from today, those who have been bathing two buckets of water per bathing time. So some people bath three times in a day and each day they bath two buckets of water. They need to promise me that from today they are going to bath only one in the morning and one in the evening. If you are in support of that, you raise up your hand. Okay, and those who also buy things just for social status. From today, let's learn that if we want to buy something, we should consider what it will be beneficial to in terms of the whole environment. So that in one accord, we can all gear towards the sustainable production and consumption. Thank you all. I want to take the opportunity to thank Professor Charles. He has been wonderful. I look up to him as my mentor because he actually guides me and all this. And also to my wonderful Nada. You have been great. Oh, you have been great. You have been consistent. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. I, you. I just hope that I'll work up a week, all of you, so that we can bring to the world a holistic education so that here on earth our impact will be felt and will leave a legacy for the next generation thank you god bless you all god bless you god bless you also uh wonderful speech so uh maybe if anybody uh, uh, dr kevin uh, would you maybe want to ask our Mr. Confidence something about this, what he speak? Dr. Thank Kevin, you. do you hear me? I do, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the uh, presentation that uh, Mr. Confidence shared, and I especially appreciated the comment about making uh, or doing production in terms of, okay, when it's not in you, going to be in use, what can we do with it next? The uh, idea of uh, circular um, production and use. And I, I think that's a wise consideration for anything that we do produce is uh, try to consider, can it be produced uh, with uh, an afterthought more than just it's going to a landfill fill or a junkyard or whatever. So thank you for that. Uh, very much appreciate uh, your comment in that regard. And I hope that we will begin to consider that 
as we move forward. So thank you, Doc. Uh, thank you, Anada. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Uh, well done, Mr. Confidence. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kevin. You know, uh, when we talk uh, about uh, the developing countries, uh, we must mention United States of America. So you are our a great uh, uh, man from USA. Thank you. Uh, dear Ranjana, please, uh, could you call our next speaker? She. Uh, before calling, I would like to comment on Mr. Confidence. Confidence, I like the idea, like we always say, we'll start from tomorrow, we'll start today, but you prove not tomorrow, not today, now. You have to start now. Best idea, I must say. Okay, so our next speaker with this, I would like to invite um, Mrs. Sunita Raji from India. Who she uh, no, no. And no, you can go to, she is not here. Go to Kavita. Okay. Our next speaker is Kavita Latar. Kadirishan from India, who is MA, MA, and principal at Ongale Public School, who is an educationist, uh, educationist with two decades of experience in India and overseas, serving in the capacity of principal and have conducted many trainings in teaching and learning strategies, and recently initiated a digital creation in the name of Lata Smart thoughts on children and parents concerned, psychological approach and dissemination of the right information is the end in mind to reach the students and shape them better. Ma'am, Kavita ma'am, the stage is all yours. Welcome ma'am. Uh, thank you Ms. Nada and Ms. Rajna for the wonderful welcome. And I'm honored to be with you all today this evening. And now I just feel to share a few views on this STP goal number 12. It is a responsible consumption and production. So rightly stated, responsible consumption. Always it should start from consumption so that we can know where to assess, how to assess, and then focus how much target is to be produced. As we are all much aware, Robert Thomas Malthus has proposed a theory long back on population and demographies. So the population of the world, if it goes in this ratio, it is increasing in geometric ratio, whereas the food production is going in the arithmetic ratio. It is really an alarming situation. Even the data shows that by 2050, when the population of the world is crossing 9 million, Three such planets are needed to meet the demands of the food for the people living on the earth with this lifestyle. So that is really a big gap, which is to be thought by all of us. And as I hail from the industry of education, I always believe educating the young minds is the right step to take care of the planet. So consumption, let us start with consumption, responsible consumption. So consumption process or the care for the resources should start right from home. It is not only the formal educational agencies like schools, colleges, universities, but also right from home, society, community, all of us are equally responsible for imparting the knowledge of responsible consumption. So usage of food, COVID-19 pandemic has underscored the relation between the nature and man. There was lockdown for all the sectors, except for the agricultural sector, except for the farmer. So people understood that the best commodity for the survival of a human being is food. So how to consume from the home level, how to teach it? There are many formal and informal strategies where a child should feel the sense, the responsibility, should appreciate the nature, 
should enjoy the aesthetic values of nature right from childhood. Every home, the self-sufficient home, let it be a big villa or a small hut or a small place where we live. But let us grow our own food in the possible manner. Let it be a vertical garden. Let it be a kitchen garden. Let it be a backyard garden. But train your child to have something for his own food. Unless we do on our own, we never appreciate the hard work of others. And food wastage is excessively seen in the community. Every one of us should feel food is a community resource. It is not a personal or individualized resource because we are buying it. But it belongs to everyone on the earth. So this consciousness should be raised in the children right from childhood, right from the school, also plays a vital role. We have many academic activities, roles, assessments. Why can't we take gardening as one activity? Why can't we take a small formative assessment in growing some microgreens? Why can't we involve the children to an industrial visit? Why can't we give always the hands-on experience, taking them to the fields? for a, a field trip. So schools also are the major agencies who are responsible in creating awareness of responsible consumption. During the childhood, if a child is made understood thoroughly how sustainable development of environment is needed, it is like using the resources for good and better without causing them any harm to the environment and allowing the resources to continue for the next generations to come. So this seed, if it is done on the right time in a young mind, definitely we can focus on the second part that is production. When these children are growing into responsible citizens of the nation and the world, they understand the targets of the world. Then we can focus on the production it is the collaborative methods of production. The three R's of production, reduce, reuse, and recycle, where the resources can be minimized where required. And we can concentrate on sharing the resources among the nations and how to help, how to care for the mankind based on the tropical or the based on the climatic, geographical, demographic needs of the nations. It can be like this, a big conference where we can share the crops or the resources, the food based on the seasons, climate existing in each country. And that can be once again a shared, a traded among the nations, which would definitely build up a responsible production. So I once again emphasize that consumption is the first thing which is to be born in mind. And I also hear remember one small anecdote by Ratan Tata in his uh, blog that is once German when he has been to Germany uh, there was some leftovers left on the table after the eating. Immediately a uh, German woman has attended the table and told it is a resource for the community. So this is the civic sense we expect every one of us to inculcate from our own inner self and to teach the younger generation that it is not that mere uh, negligence, but it is our responsible to educate the people around us that how precious the food is and how precious the resources are. It is very important to have the knowledge of the safety of resources and preservation of the resources and taking care of the future generations. So with this, I conclude that education, as the uh, video was showing before this, it is not in the books, it is not in the teacher, it is not in the school, it is not in the university. It is in the practical reality. It is the intelligence which you face the counter the situations of life. It is the knowledge and wisdom, how you save the environment, or the resources and give to the next generation. So let us all join our hands in this great mission and take your oath, like my good colleague and friend just now was asking to give us an oath on water consumption. So let us take an oath that we teach our kids 
to plant one or grow one at least in a small pot for his or, or her own satisfaction let us see something green in our home green economies self sufficient human ecosystems or to be grown and raised so let's take an oath that every house has something green to feed themselves with this i conclude thank you what a lovely thought presented by you ma'am so really i appreciate the idea which you shared like the teachers should be inculcate in the students at the very right from the early age that we can teach them and food is not uh, like a individual thing it's like um, community thing so we have to be very wise in doing it so with this so now uh, we all have we all have that one teacher in our life with whom we feel all that all will be well whatever he or she is and create on stone for us the unknowingly that teacher makes a difference in our life that one teacher or one figure is that figure which leads to the new future of the country and leads the generation of leaders iiu so will soon be starting teacher accreditation courses and you all can avail the opportunity to become a global recognized teacher thus all the the great teachers present here today can represent their country on an international level global teachers who get one year training from iid when i global recognition i drink your ass sir uh please please uh please anjana please mute yourself please mute yourself thank you thank you nada the global teacher recognition not only leads to personality development training of the teachers for international level skill development and sound knowledge of the technology used around the globe but will also lead to viable earning to all these well other than this i would like to share one more thing with all of you today dr sarvapalli radhakrishnan national teacher award 2021 swarna bharat parivar is organizing a ceremony of honor for teachers principals and persons associated with educational institutions literate teachers and social concerns at the national level proposed as a virtual summit in new delhi on september 5th and 6th on national teachers day eminent educationists Leaders and social personalities of the country will participate in this function. If any of you are eligible teachers, principals, educational institutions, and social workers, leaders, or for the above award in the eyes of any great person, then please do share, send the following information. We will be sharing the information for the registration on the chat for your kind reference. The and i just want to add to this that a great teacher always makes a great nation now moving forward i would like to share a glimpse of accreditation by iim can i request the technical team to please play the video Join us to make a difference in the orbits of education. We are the change. We are IIU. Are you a K-12 school offering a top quality education? Are your students getting global exposure? Is experiential learning and innovation a part of your curriculum? Are your teachers internationally certified educators? Are you able to identify your learners potential and expose them to compete globally? If the above questions do not sound optimist then the clock has struck to get accredited and affiliated by IIU. You think of strategies, training, competitions, we offer it. You want to interact with an expert team of educators, we possess it. You want to be exposed to learning at a global platform. 
If yes, you have embarked at the right destination. IIU's International School Accreditation Board. Let's put some light over accreditation, what it is. Why do we need it? Simply put, accreditation is value. In today's challenging world, it is extremely important that institutes or schools be accredited and approved with the institutes, meet certain standards. Accreditation assures employers that the graduates of an accredited institute are ready to face challenges and rigors of the modern world. The students who graduate from accredited institutes and schools have access to enhanced opportunities and employment and global mobility. IIU accreditation affiliation has no bars for any boards like State Boards, CBSE, ICSE, IGCSE, IB. IIU accreditation affiliation has created an arena for learners across the various countries and continents throughout the globe. What are you waiting for? Apply now. IIU's International School Accreditation Board. Yes, we are going uh, ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, technical support for this uh, yeah, this uh, video. And uh, all of you are called uh, to uh, make uh, make application uh, because uh, we uh, we make uh, we send in our chats in our groups. You can contact us on email, send information because this convocation is a very special. Uh, it has uh, four uh, points together. Uh, there is a golden book. Uh, there is for uh, accredited for a teacher. So please, uh, if you are interested, uh, you can contact us and send email because this is a big chance. Uh, if we talk about uh, the golden book, uh, maybe somebody today is uh, uh, maybe somebody of us don't know what is that golden book. So now before we move on our next uh, speakers, uh, we would like to share few insights about the golden book of earth. Yes, the golden book, a really golden book for all respected educators and friends. Uh, this book will comprise the research, innovations, experience, stories, and articles by 101 great educators who have inspired the world. Please be free and be one of that 101 great educators who inspire the world. And you will be the Wikipedia. We will be a part of the Wikipedia of knowledge. In this time, of pandemic, we all educators all over the globe are putting our best. Yes, here on this platform, uh, yesterday, today, tomorrow, all of us are putting our best things to provide education to every learner. IAU wants to provide it to every learner despite various world around the world. So in this golden book on the earth, will be describing the expressions of the educators, 101 most inspired person and educator who will make IAUs, not only IAUs, who will make a history and will be published international PR and research publishing house at IAU United Kingdom. So it is a great opportunity for each one in the sector of education to the educators. Many of you are here, educators, principals, teachers, and leaders to express yourself. So be the change that you wish to see in the world. If you are not that who wants to see you to be a change, who will make that? So send your nomination, grab the opportunity and be one of 101 great educators who have inspired the world. And remember, the last date of submission is 20 September 
2021. So the decision is yours. Please, uh, please do that and use this chance. This is a unique chance for everybody of us. So dear Rangita, would you call our next speaker? Would you call our next speaker? It must be from Vietnam, Ngajun Di Ngajun. Yes, I'm here. Oh, yes, welcome. I know. It's yes, so a very difficult to, to pronounce my name. I know. Um, uh, my name is Ngoc Nguyen. Um, I know. You say quite difficult to pronounce my name. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, again. But I'm happy to see you again. Yes. Um, yeah. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ngoc Nguyen. Uh, I'm a teacher of English, uh, a researcher, a postgraduate uh, student from Vietnam National University. Um, um, I would like to show my gratitude for giving me another chance to join this conference uh, of International Intensives University, IIU, Sustainable Development 2021. Um, Yes, in uh, our talk today, um, one uh, of 17 topics, we will focus on goal 12, uh, responsible consumption and production. Uh, one of the most necessary aspects of our life. Um, why do you say that it is an um, important aspect of our life? Now, uh, go through three uh, aspects in my talk. Uh, the first one is, what is a responsible consumption and production goal? Um, according to the UN, the responsible and sustainable consumption and production is about doing more and better with life. Uh, it is also about the decoupling economic growth from environmental degradation and increasing resource efficiently and promoting sustainable lifestyle. So we know that uh, to make it a uh, um, reality, the world tells seek to open a new world to humankind, where not just a few people undertake sustainable consumption, but where we reducing, reusing, uh, preventing, and recycling will be common for everyone in the world. So why we say that the sustainable development goal tall is the um, responsible consumption and production is important. It is because um, the humans being access extremely stretched on the planet and its resources, we know that it clearly that every living being rely on the planet for the basis need uh, of air, uh, food, uh, water, and shelter. So our consumption and production pattern is uh, problematic because we only have a uh, one planet with finite resources. However, the resource on our planet has become um has been becoming eroded gradually, and we know that uh this will lead to a lack of resources for production and uh, our daily life needs. Um, and we know that many many places in the world uh, nowadays lack uh, resources for their product, uh, production. Um, for example, um in my country Vietnam. Many, many places has uh, been um, becoming deserts and lack uh, water for planting tea or rice. Yes, besides um, the goal 12 is an instrumental for reconciling economic, uh, social and environmental objective and reducing greenhouse gas emission, a very serious uh, problem now today. So for sustainable transport solution, the principle of sustainable development um, that resort efficiency are uh, most uh, important for transport sector. We know that it is very important. However, we know that we can't stop. We can never stop producing a thing for our life because uh, no one can survive without consuming and using production. Uh, Therefore, we say that it is important, but it is a complicated uh, issue for all of us. Uh, so we need to find a way to 
um, do to uh, make the reality to it go. Yes. Um, I, I think that I will divide it into uh, three aspects. Yes. Uh, first one, uh, from a citizen perspective to the um, authority, I think that probably the UN has uh, addressed uh, the 10 year framework uh, of program on sustainable consumption and production. So all countries uh, need to take action with developed countries taking the lead and taking into account the development of capabilities of developing country. Uh, in detail, uh, the UN program said that by 2030, we need to achieve the sustainable management and efficient use of natural resources. To conduct the programs, many governments have enacted laws to encourage their institutions to use products sparingly and responsibly. Like uh, I know in uh, Japan, in Korea, and many, many other countries. And um, secondly, at a role of uh, a teacher, I think that um, education can have a big influence on changing people's mindset in consuming responsibly. Uh, like uh, many uh, speakers uh, have uh, ever mentioned before, I think that we need to include educating uh, issues that related to the goals uh, in the curriculum from the very young age. Don't wait when the uh, people as uh, um, enough uh, an adult to educate them the meaning of responsible consumption and production but we need to um, we need to educate our children from the very very young age to train their mindset because they will be the next generation of our planet uh, yes uh, at my screen for example students are taught the meaning of uh, 3r program that are reduced reuse and recycle rabbit yes i myself find out that they are really interested in taking part uh, in the activity of this program. Yes, and they have uh, ever recycled trivial things to, to new beautiful things. Um, they are very simple, very small and simple, like a, a flower vase, like a small bags, like a, um, yes, um, uh, clothes bag, yes, clothes pillows, uh, from old clothes, yes, and from old things, from discarded things. However, they find it many meaningful when they can uh, contribute a small thing to the global uh, problem, yes, uh, solving. And uh, finally, uh, I add uh, uh, an individual, some, a member of human being. I think that uh, one of us, any one of us, the host of this planet, need to consider carefully before we use or producing anything. Of course, the can do something to contribute to using things efficiently, I'm sure. So the very last thing but easy thing uh, that any of us can do is not a great thing when it can be made you up. So before throwing something away, uh, I think we need to remember to ask ourselves some question like, um, is there anyone who need it? If yes, then offer it or give or, or present to them. Yes, don't discard them. Uh, the second, like, uh, can we reuse it? Yes. If yes, we need to keep it for later you. Don't throw, the, don't throw it immediately. Or we can ask a question like, uh, can we recycle it into a new thing? If yes, need to redesign it to make meaningful thing, even a small one. And I hope that if we can do this habit, we can make the habit, we can do something meaningful to our planet. Yes, and I hope that all of us uh, here can do, I'm sure we can do. Yes, to uh, have our planet a beautiful place there with less rabbit and uh, wet food thing that we do every day. Yes, uh, 
that's uh, I think not a presentation, uh, a small talk from my personal perspective today. Thank you for the listening. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Nguyen. Uh, I really uh, like uh, your personal thinking. Uh, and before uh, you start to speak, uh, maybe I didn't say because I know Nguyen and Nguyen was uh, here before a few days, but uh, uh, she said that she's a professor of English, but she is also an artist. Do you see all of you a big smile? She's talking like a great artist. Thank you, Nguyen. Uh, and I appreciate your thinking in v Vietnam. It is very, very important that what you said. And I see that you make a great research on this topic. Thank, thank you. Thank you so That's much. Yes, thank you so much for the compliment. Uh, in fact, I have uh, ever found it a uh, recycling uh, club, a small club at my student for my student to create anything they want from uh, TV or think. Yes, and I find out that mm -hmm. they are very creative. Yes, very yes. creative. Yes, thank you yes. so much yes. for the compliment. We all get that conclusion about your great creativity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ranjana, the stage is yours. Mute your, unmute yourself. Yes. yes, Nada, thank you. So now we have our next speaker, Dr. V. Vasanthu Kumar from India, who is a PhD holder at Head and Assistant Professor uh, Nagaritnam, Nagaritnam Anglaman. Yes, our professor is a great person. He is a symbol from for India. Professor, where are you? We I'm here. All, I'm here. all knows you here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Very good evening. Very good evening, my dear sisters and brothers of the universe, especially in IAU. I'm going to share my views on this today's uh, en enriching uh, topic. How we are going to maintain our source how we are going to maintain and produce the level of waste. This is the two questions I'm going to focus under this topic. Before that, I'm not complaining, but this is the fact and we need to accept it. One of the part of educationists and professionals, even leaders and workers of various sectors doesn't know about the SDG views. The, all the SDG goals, that's seem to know. So we are in, uh, we are in to create awareness. So I thank IIU and my Nagaratna Mangalaman Arts and Science College secretary and my friends. This is our duty to expose our views in this SDG goals. Why I'm complaining in the part of educationalist, professional leaders and workers of various sectors. They just need to know about the SDG still. So we want to create awareness, first of all, to them. Next, this discussion focused, I think, two type of category peoples. One is uneducated, and another one is educated. We are in that educated sector. What about the uneducated peoples? That means they are good. They, are, they know their level well. This production and consumptions based on these two type of those category of people's needs that need only design the productions, that productions meet the consumptions. So, my dear uneducated and educated peoples, we want to make ourselves. So, we want to create little awareness in our heart. I'm already discussed the STG 8. This, that the STG 8 and 12 have a great relationship. We are talking that economic work. Now we are talking about production and consumption. Both we have a great bridge, how we are going to maintain the 
awareness in a production in our awareness in a production the our awareness means all the two category people's awareness so we want to create that awareness through the education already the so many resource people said so how we are going to create in in young minds we are going to create through the education and the uneducated peoples created by government plans for the example how we are going to maintain water source how we are going to maintain food man food how we are going to maintain greenery that is agriculture there is no much awareness there is no much awareness in individually our indian government introduced a rain water harvesting system but they only introduced and maintained and to inform to the through the department wise but people does not maintain does not follow so my concept to follow up is very very important if we maintain rain car harvesting system we have enough water source if we are maintain green management system we must have good rain so and then food the world is two side one is poor and another one is rich still there are so many countries that doesn't have a enough food for their children that people so my advice my views is the educationalist and professionals leaders and workers of various sectors must learn that same awareness from your own knowledge and uneducated peoples must feed mm. this stg knowledge this sustainable development knowledge from government plans so that the government should encourage that category people but the educational peoples and other b individually we want to learn then only we are going to develop then only we are going to talking about the consumptions and the responsible production there are so many productions we when we are going to product led bulb for what is the usage the, the educationalists know the professionals know leaders and workers know what that usage must be uh, openly and uh, openly we want to indicate the uneducated peoples we are talking about educated peoples will be we are going to talking about the young minds uh, uh, we want to encourage the young minds what about the uneducated we want to boost up the uneducated peoples awareness then only we are going to maintain this stable educated and uneducated peoples both of them joining in a single line then they are going to maintain the production and the consumption in a correct level so this is my first point second point is disciplined mind that disciplined mind will be produced by moral education i have already discussed it moral mind that moral mind will be come from the moral education so we want to teach economic value through the moral education so we want to put that education in the elementary level now we have only higher education level we want to put that education in a elementary level so through the education through the plans we want to create awareness then only we are going to escape from the waste management system we are going to maintain the production uh, value we are going to maintain consumption assessment so my final view is we want to develop individual awareness in a uh, in a enriching plants for the example we want to maintain camp in the uh, through the government we want to maintain we have to create the camp awareness in the village we want to maintain the camp through the students in the educational area we want to maintain the camp in a professional area in a, we want to kind of maintain the camp in the companies so please make awareness it will be solve all those problems then we are going to have a enrichment of the platforms thank you so much thank you so much iiu thank you so much my college nagaratna mangalamal college for giving such a wonderful opportunity here thank you thank you dr vasantha kumar it was really wonderful it 
he is listening to you. You have rightly said that uneducated people knowledge to be booster. Very true, sir. Then again, you this uh, you again shared that disciplined mind should be produced by moral education. Very rightly said, sir. Completely agree with you. And Thank it you. has to be started right from the very beginning. The early child would not like from early childhood like learning. We have to start that. Very true, sir. Rightly, sir. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you sir, for sharing. Thank you, sir, for sharing your experience with us. Thank you. Thank so, you. There, Rajana, let's go ahead. Now it's time to introduce us. Special person, so go on. Yes, I'm going to start. Just a minute. Yeah, yeah, come here. Can I come in here? Just like up, what happened yesterday? Uh, network -wise. Professor, um, Professor Charles, please. We will ask you uh, behind Diane because we have still speakers who are waiting, please. and you will okay. have a chance again today. Don't worry, yeah. please. Yeah. Okay. Shall I continue, Nada? Yes, of course, continue and present a special person. Yes, so now we all know there is always that one person who has the vision, the thought, the idea behind a successful venture and organization. And if we talk about the man behind the success of IIU, it's our beloved co-founder, of IIU, Mr. Piyush Pan. Any words would be less for him. Thus, I'm sharing a short video to give all of us an insight into his journey and his life. So can we have the video on Mr. Piyush Pandey's technical team, please? Piyush Pandit was born on 27th July 1987 in Prathapgarh, Uttar Pradesh in a middle class family. Piyush Pandit is that name who is recognized by his multiple work genres, an international social activist, award winning social worker, serial entrepreneur and founder of SBP Global. He has determined his destiny by having trust in him and Almighty God. Piyush Pandit is a diligent and passionate social worker committed to serve the humanity. Piyush Pandit has played a crucial role in crafting a team of volunteers and achieved global recognition as head of Svarna Bharat Parivar Trust, which span across more than 50 countries. He granted several live interviews and press conferences on rural development, access to justice and the right to equality. Piyush is youth leader with extensive social work experience, political activism and stellar entrepreneurial achievements. When you think of social work and changing the world by improving human experiences, Piyush Pandit comes to mind. He is proactively mentoring other social activists to encourage social activism and entrepreneurship around the world. He is working fiercely towards achieving United Nations Sustainable Goals in India and over the globe under the flawless leadership of Piyush Pandit Swarna Bharat Paribar Trust was established. The organization strives to place the humanity at forefront and bringing back the human warmth which has lost due to busy modern life. They are fighting to ensure ending poverty, unemployment and making society better for all. Rural India has been a focal point of Piyush which gave birth to Help India Help Foundation. 
the social work continues and the e-village was established in 2012 to reinforce India's roots in villages and villagers. At the crux of Piyush's work is the youth. He believes that youth empowerment is closely aligned with social service. Piyush is the CEO of Piyush Group. The organization covers several industries including renewable energy, logistics, real estate and so on. Piyush Pandit has succeeded in scaling the growth of these organizations and his work has taken them to the multinational level. Piyush is able to form and sustain positive relationship with people. He has received a plethora of awards and recognitions in 2018 with India's Great Leader Award, India Star Book of Records in 2019, GTF World Summit Bangkok 2019, Volunteer Hero, Abad Samman Samaro, Blood Donation Award, Environmental Sentinel Award, Yuva Gaurav Samman and Literature Confluence Award, Piyush Pandit believes in the philosophy of growing together. His slogan is, let's grow together and create tomorrow's entrepreneur. He has the vision to create a society that is based on freedom, equality, solidarity, diversity and fairness. Yes, as we saw on this video, very few people today have a passion like our Mr. Piyush Pandit. He's a mission. He's a mission to create a change in the experience of people. He's a person who is, uh, who is always here to help everybody in every time. And we are very happy to have Mr. Piyush Pandit and also we will have a golden India that he's always thinking about that. Thank you, thank you respecters, Mr. Piyush Pandit, our co-founder and also thanks to all of our uh, co-founders, Mrs. Mona, Mr. Steven and our dear Dr. Satman. Uh, now, after this, uh, uh, introducing our uh, Mr. Piyush Pandit, we are going to our next speaker. I am really excited. The next speaker is coming from my country. It's coming from my country, Croatia. And I want to tell that is Miss Professor Yasenka Rashetina. She is coming from Split. She's coming from my county, Split Dalmatia County. Uh, professor, uh, professor Yasenka Rashatina is an economic professor, a vet professor, advisor. Uh, she is uh, working on many national projects. She is very, uh, very uh, active in education on the biggest Croatia level. Uh, there are many, many things that I could tell about her. She is very nearby me, like all Croatia professors who were presented he these days on this big IAU platform. Professor Yasenka Rashetina, Dobrodošla, the stage is yours. Thank you very much for nice word. Uh, please permission to share my screen. Uh, yes, you have a permission. You can uh, yeah, you can share it. Uh, well, uh, do you see my presentation? Yes, yes, you can you can put okay. it uh, like um, you can put it that we can see only one slide. Okay, okay. Uh, well, uh, good afternoon or uh, good evening to all. 
Uh, I'm a professor in a vocational high school in the city of Split in Croatia, and I'm honored to be a part of this great event. And I'd like to thank to Mrs. Nada Ratkovic, my dear colleague, for invitation to participate in this international conference. Well, uh, the economic progress has increased resource consumption, waste, pollution, and the gap between the rich and the poor. So the actions or inactions of present generation can jeopardize the life of next generations. SDG 12 balance the other SDGs because the action in this area will affect outcomes in others. So the creativity, know-how, technology, and financial resources from all of society is necessary to achieve global goals until 2030. For instance, reducing food waste may have an effect on lowering worldwide food prices, thus benefiting the poor. Uh, in order to minimize the use of natural resources, toxic material, and the quantity of waste and pollution as sustainable consumers, we can buy eco-friendly products, uh, use recycled materials, and responsibly dispose of our waste. Uh, people need to be constantly informed and reminded of responsible behavior and the consequences of irresponsible behavior. Education about sustainable development should start from the earliest years of life. Also, we need a creative and innovative solutions such as these boots because uh, worn out shoes represent a significant part of total household waste and contain harmful ingredients. In other side, over 2 billion cups of coffee are drunk around the world every day, but the coffee grounds release greenhouse gas meth. These boots are made from a recycled coffee grounds of only 15 cups of coffee. So it's necessary to share our knowledge and examples like this. My budget will be good down. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, please, the Professor Charles, mute yourself. It's a pleasure once again. I need to thank God for a day like this. It's a beautiful topic of which uh, every one of us should be able to contribute effectively. I thank God for professor, all professor you will talk a little later. Please, uh, please, please, a little later. Yeah, I, I apologize, please, please, I apologize please, Professor. Okay. I think uh, we lost you for a bit. I think we had a speaker in session. Uh, maybe you want to wear. No worries, no worries. So <laughs> you unmuted. So you were just trying to make sure that you mute yourself. But yes, I think you're speaking after this. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, can I go? Yes, sure. yes, yes. yes. Thank us. Uh, okay. uh, uh, the food waste is a global problem that occurs throughout all of the food supply chain. The situation is similar in my country, in Croatia. About 400,000 tons of foods are thrown away every year, while at the same time, the shelves of charity stores are half empty. The biggest food waste takes place in households. So as a high school teacher, I encourage my students to act in accordance with sustainable development through school projects. In this project, uh, related to, to, to SDG 12, my students notice that the reason for food waste is that purchase quantity is more than necessary and the use by date is not checked. So these are the recommendations for reducing household waste. Don't overbuy, check use by dates, plain meals, and donate to the food bank. In this project, my students make a poster about responsible business of one Croatian company, and then they claim their own responsible company named Green Passion. 
So I think workshop like this is a good way to educate young people about responsible consumption and production. And my conclusion is that it is important to focus on the key role of young people in removing poverty and achieving sustainable development through the SDG 12. But each individual should be an example to other members of society through his own responsible actions, because only together we can make changes, we can be the change. Thank you for your attention and greetings from Croatia. Thank you. Uh, thank you, there, Yasenka. Uh, agree. Together, we can only make changes. You gave us uh, beautiful examples uh, what you are doing uh, with your students. Batsanje uh, hrane don't waste a food. Uh, these are great examples, and I must say that Professor Yasenka uh, is continually working on this kind of project and many, many other projects. Uh, what is also important, Split, uh, Split is a Mediterranean uh, town, uh, has a specific uh, uh, climate. Uh, also, uh, many uh, people from uh, rural uh, parties of Split Dalmatia counties live in Split. Uh, and here we, uh, we want to make that town an untouchable. We want to uh, take care about the nature because Split is also like Dubrovnik, UNESCO Hi. town. Uh, and these problems uh, before, uh, prof uh, pro before Professor Yasenka uh, didn't mention it, Split was a town with big uh, manufacturers and production. Uh, and by the time uh, that is all uh, closed. Why? Because big factories were by, uh, were by the Adriatic Sea. And that was a big problem. And that is why we don't have uh, no production. And uh, the only, only, uh, the only, uh, how can solve that problem? So we can only solve that problem if we go uh, behind to uh, rural parts. And also when we think about the rural parts, that is not a good idea. That is why we all, all countries must invest in uh, SDGs, uh, in ecology and recycling and every of this topic. So tomorrow, tomorrow we will, we will maybe uh, find more answers that we didn't get here today. Uh, many answers we'll get today. Uh, that is what I want to say about uh, the presentation uh, from Professor Yasenka Kashetina. Uh, we have, uh, I uh, look in the chat, uh, our next speaker must come from Russia. Uh, she said that she will be here today, but uh, I think that she has, an, uh, uh, she has problem with internet connection. So, uh, if any uh, any speaker uh, who didn't speak uh, and we uh, uh, go uh, past them, uh, please uh, you can write in the chat. Uh, I uh, checked before and I don't see nobody. And now uh, we can uh, give a chance uh, to Professor Charles. But Professor Charles, only few minutes to finish your speech. Okay. No problem. Thank you very much for the opportunity. We need to thank God for a day like this. This particular topic is very sweet. It's a very nice topic, which we need to embrace. Thank God for the UN. The UN, they are deeming feed that we should have this so that we caution ourselves. We know how to do, what to do, the step to take next. It's inclusive to, to all the people, whether disability or abilities, includes everybody. And what is he trying to say? He's trying to say two, three, five, five things. We need to promote five things. What are the things we need to promote? We need to promote resources and energy Professor efficiency. Charles, little slower. You are talking today again very fast. We can please speak Give me a short time. I need to be fast. OK, let me be slow there. Let me be slow. Yes, we are <laughs> going to be talking about five things. What are the five things we are looking at? We are looking at resources, energy, efficiency. One, 
We also look at we're looking at the sustainable infrastructure too. We are looking at to promote all these areas, to promote them, the resources, energy efficiency, promotion of it, and also sustainable infrastructure. We want to promote them. That's what the UN is trying to tell us to do in order to create awareness so that everybody will be educated. Awareness is the key. By the time you know this, you will know what to do next. See there are somebody putting uh, something that is not into you, making you to do what you're supposed not to do. So what other thing is trying to promote? To provide access to basic services, access to basic services. services. The fourth thing again is also to promote the green and decent job. We need decent job, we need green job, we need powerful job. Also the fifth thing again is to promote a better quality for all. Every one of us want to be better, to have quality, something good, so that we can be able to demonstrate and move out there. The CLDG 12 has 11 targets and 13 indicators. Yes, when we talk. Talk of the objective of uh, the, the waste. Want to know we, this waste are being reduced to the BS level. What are those levels? Through prevent. Do. We prevent it. Thank God for confidence. Who says something that pertains to that? If you know you're, you're not capable of doing this, why not? Why, why looking at somebody else? Why not do it within your own space? You don't look at people. You don't look at people. You grow within what God has given you. Manage it and you grow better rather than looking at any other people because someone is doing. We want to prevent that. Two, to re for reduction, we want to make sure we reduce whatever thing is reducible and also to recycling, recycling and to reuse whatever thing we are doing, reusing it. And by 2030, there will be half per capita global food waste at both retail level and also consumer level, so as to reduce food losses and post harvest losses along production and supply channels. Why are we, why are we calling for this sustainability, the consum consumption and production? We are looking at a way of uh, uh, about doing more and better, doing more, doing work, more work, more production, and we do it in a better way, so as to less resources. And also, we are looking at decoping economic growth from environmental degradation. And also, we are looking at increasing resources efficiency. We want to increase the resources, the efficiency of it, so that to be useful to everybody. And we also we want to look at promoting sustainable lifestyle. So the lifestyle of each person will be different, will be okay. The lifestyle, you can live your own lifestyle. Don't look at live another person's lifestyle. And what are the examples of uh, electro, electronic uh, uh, locomotion, locomotive? We also have rec recycling. We have uh, cycling, we have uh, renewable energy. These are the things to look at. And also, to, in order for this, uh, this sustainable consumption to be strong, we need to, the environment matters, the environment, it, 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 it operates, such as we look at consuming renewal, we look at the efficiency of goods and services. How should we make sure that this sustainable development happens? Ways we can make it to happen. What are the ways? There are three things we must do. And these three things, they are so paramount, which we have been saying, the use of our voice to petition policymaker, whoever you feel that they are not budgeting up to what he's supposed to do. Because the UN 2030, 2030 wants to end the poverty. Whoever that is not trying to follow that route, we should petition that person. And two, to consume, to consume things responsibly. When you want to consume things responsibly, what you know that you can do is what you should use. Don't do what you cannot so as to waste. They don't want waste, want zero hunger. Want everybody to benefit so that this one will not consume every, what is meant for B. A is consuming it. No, you and say we should avoid such. We don't want such. And also the third one is to find alternative, affordable, clean energy. We should find it. That's what they are trying to accessible, accessible to uh, rely, uh, accessible. we should be able to assess affordable, access to rely, being reliable, and be sustainable in whatever thing we are doing, modern energy for all. We should make sure we do it accordingly. And also, we are trying to make sure that we are able to achieve what we call economic growth and sustainable development. Here, we are able to reduce ecological footprint by changing the way we produce and consume goods and services. Mm -hmm. And the A we are looking at to balance our economic, our environment, and social needs. Also, align people to prosper for now and 
for the future. And there are five pillars we need to look at in sustainable sustainability. We look at five pillars. What are the pillars? We look at economic, we look at social, we look at environment, we look at cultural, and we look at the security aspects. These are the things you look at. We thank our, our able, our able uh, excellency, the CEO, and also the COO for his great opportunity, giving us this, this platform so that we're able to express ourselves, make people know what we, they need to know, so as to make everybody happy. By the time you know what you need to do, you'll be happy. Nobody, nobody will shit on you or ride on you. That's why I thank God for all the moderator, the speaker, what you have said so far. I appreciate you. And God will come to help us and bless us. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Charles. Thank you very much. We said that you will today finish with your speech. Thank you so much. Now, uh, now it's time to conclude the wonderful conference. And, and indeed, we have witnesses some new ideas, not some many, many new ideas, techniques, ventures about our 12 SDG. Uh, and finally, I would like to invite Dr. Satnam Dochekar, our co-founder from United Kingdom, to take this stage for the vote of thanks. Dr. Satnam, please, uh, the stage is yours. Thank you, Nada. Thank you, Ranjana, for the brilliant session that you've been conducting. <laughs> As always, I said, no, I don't know. You know, when I, by the time I get to my word of thanks, I'm, I'm actually absorbed, absorbed in the whole <laughs> realm of this sustainability <laughs> development goals and I'm like wow I've learned so much today <laughs> we <laughs> all know it feels like being in a classroom and you're like oh wow that was good <laughs> oh wow what do I mention and what do I not it's like an exam no I have to process it out and then <laughs> deliver it but you know what it is such a beautiful moment you know this moment that we're creating with IAU here with our eminent speakers with our guests with our members with everyone who's joining every day with this platform I always say this this is not a platform for one IAU this is a joint platform it's a family that we're creating. You know, we're putting everyone together every day. We're expanding. We're reaching the hearts of people. That is what we do. You know, what do we specialize in and how do we do it? We touch the heart and we almost get to the heart and then we become the heart. That is what we do. That is what IIU wants to do. We want to be the heart of education, you know, and we want to beat in every heart art in terms of education. That is why we put together all these brilliant speakers from around the world. We listen to the experiences. And exactly like one of our speakers said today, it's not about what you learn in school. It's not about what you learn with books. It's not about the curriculum. It is not. Life is so much beyond that, isn't it? You know, you learn with your experiences. You learn with someone else's experiences, real life experiences. For me, everything begins at home. You know, we say that, yeah, the schools have the responsibility. Okay, the educators have the responsibility. Okay, yeah. this, that, you know, it's very easy to have this blaming finger and we have three pointing us. So <laughs> where do we start? We as we actually, you know what, again, like I said, one of the uh, one of our very eminent speakers said that most of us, we do not actually understand the sustainable development goals even yet. So if we're not aware of it, how are we going to educate anyone? If we do not even know the core principle, the values, what the actually the goals mean, what is the sustainable goal? What are we striving for? Okay, forget how to get to them if we do not even understand what they are. How do we have to get to it? Exactly, you know, it's not about educated people. Educated people, fine, they're being, you know, we, we're getting on these sessions, but the real challenge is to get to people where there is, you know, when they're not they're deprived of education. So how do you reach out to masses? How do you reach out to masses? So this initiative that IE is taking, why do we invite on uh, professors, on uh, you know, educators on our platform. Why? Our, our platform intention. Why? Our intention. I don't know. I hear myself. I don't know. I hear myself. Okay. We hear you a little microphone. Eh? Yes. <laughs> Can you hear me now? No. Now it's okay. Okay. So what? 
see, my intention is to come here and just give us the brief of what IAU is actually trying to do. You know, uh, academically, we understand, you know, we understand the logistic, we understand the infrastructure, we understand what is being done. Um, I, I stand and I think I want to represent the heart of IAU. Beyond all that, we are humans. Beyond all that, we have aim. We have to reach out to where no one can. We have to put together means, resources, ways to get this education, this very incredible, this highest form of education, make it available, accessible to every part of the world, every remote part of the world. This is our challenge. This is what we want to do. And that is why we invite every day, everyone to join this one mission, one vision, and with passion like you have. <laughs> Professor Charles, we understand, you know, that is your passion. You know, your passion doesn't let you stable. Why? Because dream is not what we see when we're sleeping. Dream is what doesn't let us sleep. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So this is your, when, when you speak, what I, I don't hear your words. What I see is there's a passion because you want to make it happen. And you're like, wait a second, I am enough. You know why? Because if I'm not enough, I'll motivate you. I'll motivate you. And you just join me. Don't listen to what I'm saying. All it means is just get up and do it. That's the attitude we want. That's the attitude we want. We want to just get up and do it. If you don't know how to do it, We'll let you know. We don't know if we don't know how to do it. Let's listen to these people who are telling us how to do it. You know why? That is why this platform is important. You know, for us to understand how to integrate things, how to put them together. So, like I said, one good thing we're doing. Thank you, Mr. Piyush Pandey, for giving me this opportunity to let allowing me to uh, you know be very attentive for the word of thanks because in that minute I, I know that the time is not specific and I might lose it and I might not have this opportunity to speak to everyone such beautiful people that I really want to get to and thank them for their precious time what is so most important at the moment tell me everyone time isn't it the most important thing that you have at the moment is time and if you're willing to give that to us we are so appreciative of you because there is not anything much important than that. Okay, your time, your patience, your attendance, your presence, that is the most valuable asset that we can actually have from you. So that is why I said, we're having this opportunity. We are so appreciative, so thankful. We want to see you over and over and over again. We want to do more and more sessions with you. We want to learn more from you. We want to grow with you. We want to grow in your hearts and we want to carry you in our hearts. <laughs> with that, I would like to take this formal uh, opportunity on behalf of our a trustee, Dr. Rashni Lalji, our very lovely, very unique president, <laughs> Mr. Piyush Pandit, who has this driving passion to make it all happen. Uh, he doesn't sleep and he doesn't let anyone else sleep, but it's all worth it. <laughs> it's all worth it. 24 7 is like, okay, this, that, that. I'm like, please, like, did you see Nada? What time was it when you were speaking? It was 3 47 a.m. my time here. And I was like trying to wake you up at 1.47 your time. So this is the dedicated IIU team. And I had uh, Dr. Rabia there. Then I had uh, Deepika coming up. You know, there's no time limit for us. We don't have clocks anymore. We're working on this zonal, you know, this uh, global zone. <laughs> but we have no clue of times anymore. We've left our watches behind. We live in a different world. And what is keeping us like that? It is this motivation, this drive, this passion. So yes. And also, like I said, our, our, all our other uh, associate co-founders, Mona, Stephen, thank you very much. Yeah. Our uh, Pratibhaji, the advisory president board, our country directors, Professor Charles, our most amazing Nada. <laughs> Not only country director, I don't know how many, you know, I don't know how to designate her. She's, she's like the core of this whole series. So like I said, Nada, you, you moderate, you put things together, you bring people together. I mean, you I'm a I'm a multidisciplinary <laughs> person. I can do everything, Dr. Satnam. <laughs> no, definitely, definitely. We need people like you. See, every time from everyone, there is something to learn. This is what I know. And I'm so fortunate to learn every day with all of you. And I'm growing and I feel privileged. And I feel happy that everyone else also has this opportunity. So at the end, also our uh, 
Prachi Kaur, our country director for India, also our advisory and head of our SDGs, uh, Kalyani Rao, and all the people, Dipchika, we have uh, Dr. Shelley, we have Rabia Ji, we have Corina, we have so many lovely people working round the clocks all the time to make it happen. On behalf of everyone, I take this opportunity to thank you all for being here, for sharing your beautiful precious views we take them on board as well like i said for us they are they are change maker views and we are abiding by them we take them on board and also we are so grateful to you and like i said keep uh, coming up and please 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 give us your support so we can make it happen again last one last thing i'm so sorry i've taken a lot of time today uh, we're launching our WEC, which is the Women's uh, IAU Women's Entrepreneurship uh, Council. So we're launching the program on the, 20, uh, on the 4th of September, 5 to 8 uh, India time. And I would request all our lovely ladies to please join the group. I've shared the link on the chat. I'll share the link tomorrow as well. I'll share wherever possible because we want to join all the women wherever possible in this world to come up and stand for their rights mm -hmm. and, and promote women empowerment and do whatever we can to make this happen. Thank you. Thank you, Nada. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Satnam on your wonderful uh, words. Uh, like Dr. Satnam said, the time for us is not important. We work at day, we work at night. So that is IAU and that is why IAU has a big big result and uh, that is why we are here today. Uh, now it's the time to everybody of you uh, camera I want to see your face because I want to make pictures. Amajur I again see your poster. Amajur please yeah, everybody yes, Yes, yes and I'm, also I'm I want to thank beautiful Vishana, yeah, yeah, Azedin, Dr. Shirley, Rayani. Please. Please. Uh, this part, Dr. Shirley, Rayani, Dr. Prakash, Tahina, Azedina, and others, Laura, please. Please, 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 Dr. Shirley, thank you. Thank you very much. You are so beautiful. So beautiful. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. all our today's amazing speakers. Uh, everybody of you were brilliant. Thanks to our dear Dr. Uh, Abdul, what, what he joined us as a special guest as a Minister of Education on Maldivi. We heard many things from him and also he will join us again, maybe next time, maybe on some other events. All of you were today amazing. Tomorrow is a new day. Tomorrow is a big SDG, climate action. Climate action and that SDG is, I hope that everybody of us here today must know and must talk and tomorrow I am setting a big argue about climate action. Uh, until tomorrow, I hope you all enjoyed and at the, time, at the same time learn a lot from this all amazing eminent speakers, SDG leaders and from this stage, IAU stage and this International Sustainable Development Goals First Sustainable Development Goals Conference. And we will come back soon with another inspiring, educating ideas and conferences. Uh, when this finished at 4 September, a new is starting. At 5 September is starting a first international climate change conference. And that conference will be five days. And there you will also have many eminent and global speakers all around the world. So after this, please continue learning and growing with us, with IAU. Until that, stay safe, stay healthy, and build sustainable
future. Thank you all for that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming up. Thank you, Nada. Thank you, Ranjanaji, again. Thank, thank you very much, ma'am. <laughs> namaste. Namaste for, namaste for India. Namaste. 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 <laughs> it's so beautiful. For Nada. Croatia. For Croatia. Goodbye. Uh, for Good Croatia. Do Virginia. <laughs> Goodbye from UAE at thank the moment. You, Goodbye. Bye. Namaste. Bye. Everybody, Namaste. bye.